depending on who you ask, plot holes can either describe something in a story which irreparably destroys an otherwise enjoyable work of fiction, or no big thing, so long as you turn your brain off and accept what you're given, like the well-trained, consuming dog that you are. They can come in a variety of forms, ranging from genuine inconsistencies and factual errors, such as the movie Clerks, when Veronica refers to Dante being forced to work the entire day instead of a single shift before this actually happens, to more subjective things, like characters behaving in a manner inconsistent with their character, such as when Doctor Strange, who is known for his literal foresight, starts making downright poor and sloppy decisions, seemingly with no forethought at all, because the script needs him to. What I'm saying is that plot holes can either be an objective assertion of fact that can't be disputed, or something subjective that is a matter of opinion and subject to interpretation. Now, am I an expert on plot holes? Certainly not. In fact, I hardly even notice them until a YouTube video points them out to me. But it is for that very reason that I feel I am qualified to point out what has to be one of the worst plot holes ever produced. Because for something to be so obviously idiotic that my idiotic brain notices it, it's got to be a hell of a piece of nonsense. And that's why I submit to you, friends, my nominee for the stupidest plot hole in the history of television. This is House. If you haven't watched it, it was a medical drama about the titular Dr. Gregory House, a thinly veiled Sherlock Holmes who is as brilliant at diagnostic medicine as he is a complete asshole. You see, writing complex characters is difficult, so one shorthand for that is to just have your protagonist be a brilliant but unlikable misanthrope, who people are drawn to for the former and repulsed by for the latter. While diagnosing mysterious illnesses and ailments, Dr. House berates and abuses anyone who crosses his path, from co-workers to patients, subordinates to superiors, and everyone in between. But he also saves people's lives, and the struggle between these two makes for dramatic television. Now, this sort of character is always a difficult balancing act, particularly in television where characters, well, characteristics, eventually become accentuated over time to the point of absurdity. So for the brilliant asshole archetype, you inevitably reach the point where they have to cross lines that no reasonable person would reasonably tolerate, no matter how potentially redeeming the character's other qualities might be. Also, just as a side note, Dr. House was one of those characters that if the fedora-tipping Reddit atheists had a Mount Rushmore, he would definitely be on it. He was constantly dunking on people for believing in anything, and there's a neat little irony in a smug, self-congratulatory atheist having a god complex. But I digress. Given the show is about a brilliant man who pushes boundaries, not just in medicine, but in personal and professional relationships, it took a bit of time for things to escalate to the point of absurdity. Enter season three and its premiere, Meaning. The episode opens at a teenage boy's birthday party where his father, who for several years has been paralyzed and confined to a wheelchair, drives his wheelchair right into the swimming pool. Birthday parties, am I right? House takes on the case despite his colleagues' objections. You see, they all think that the guy, confined to a wheelchair and unable to participate in, well, life, simply tried to end it all by drowning himself. But House sees a mystery, one which his colleagues chalk up to him being bored and concocting a puzzle that doesn't exist, just to satisfy his endlessly curious mind. House then proceeds to run a series of invasive tests, which other people warn might kill the guy, and all of them nearly kill the guy. When the case is finally taken away from him, he has his regularly scheduled epiphany that the guy drove his wheelchair into the pool not to commit suicide, but because his body was unable to regulate heat, and that giving him one simple, harmless injection would not only cure this, but cure his paralysis and allow him to walk again. Yes, I know, but it's a medical drama. He tells Cuddy, his friend and the hospital administrator, about his theory, but she tells him no, as there's simply no evidence that this is true. He insists that even if he's wrong, the injection won't cause him any harm, but she insists that he simply can't treat people based on his hunches. But, as they prepare to send the man home to his family, she changes her mind and gives him the injection. After a couple minutes, the man suddenly and dramatically frees himself from the restraints of the wheelchair, stands up, and hugs his wife and son for the first time in years. Dr. House was right. Cuddy tells Wilson, another doctor and friend of House, what happened and that she's on her way to tell him he was right. Wilson objects, saying that despite him being right this time, there was still no evidence that he would be. Dr. House is still reckless, and that recklessness will eventually lead to him killing someone in the future. 
They both agree that for the sake of House learning the lesson that he doesn't just have carte blanche to do whatever he wants, they won't tell him. Now, I can sort of see the logic behind this, but there's, there's just one glaring problem with all of it. This is a TV show, meaning in the very next episode, the guy that you are now asserting is too reckless to know all the facts about a previous case will still be treating people. You're going to take dangerously sick people stricken with ailments that are difficult to diagnose and place their care in the hands of someone you currently think is a dangerous liability. In case you're wondering, in this very episode, Dr. House treats a seven-year-old child. In a vacuum, the decision not to tell House kind of makes sense, but it's a twisted sort of logic. To be consistent with that logic, there needs to also be some kind of oversight to his work. Like, he's dangerous to his patients, so let's diminish his role a bit. Let's give him some more rudimentary cases until he gets his ego in check. But to say he's dangerous, he's a danger to his patients... Okay, let's just go right back to giving them the most difficult cases, even children that could kick off at any moment. It has to be one of the dumbest things I've ever seen on television. 